Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome back to video six of our After Effects Beginners course. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to work with effects and presets in After Effects. So let's jump into it. So we mentioned in video one that there was a panel here called Effects and Presets. If you're familiar at all with Premiere Pro, this is basically exactly the same as the Effects panel in Premiere. If we select it, we can see that there's a huge selection of different effects that we can actually add to our video. This list is much larger than the one available inside of Premiere and contains very powerful and highly specialized effects. But it would be impossible to go over all of them, so we're just going to go over a couple of principles and then a couple specific examples. Effects in After Effects work on a drag and drop system. So let's see how it works with a simple Gaussian blur. Let's find it first by going through the folders. And we can find this particular effect under the folder called Blur and Sharpen. You can probably tell that each of these different folders holds a specific genre of effects, and you can easily tell what kind of effects are gonna be in each folder. But if we know the name of the effect that we want ahead of time, or even just part of the name, we can type it in here on the search bar and only effects whose names partially match will pop up. Now that we've found our effect, when we drag and drop it onto our layer here, we can notice two things. First is that under our layer drop down here, we get an additional tab called effects. And if we drop it down, we can see that our Gaussian blur is located here and that we can make changes to it. But we can also see that when we dropped it in, it brought up a new window in place of our project window. This is our effects controls window, which has a similar function to the one in Premiere Pro. Here we have the option of making our changes to our video layer from either of these two locations. And when we make changes in one of these locations, the change is recognized in the other one as well. If you ever need to go back to your project window to find video files, you can do that by clicking this tab up here. Great, so now we can see that if we increase the value of this effect, the effect becomes stronger and more prominent. And if we look at all of the different options that are available to us for this effect, we can get an understanding of how many different things we can actually do with this specific effect. For example, in addition to making our image more or less blurry, we can check this box to make sure that all the changes extend to the edge of the frame. But it's important to note that effects will only make an impact on the specific layer that you apply them to. So for example, we have our layer here that we applied the blur to. But now let's say we add a mask to this layer like we learned how to do in video 4. And then we add another piece of footage beneath our layer here. Now we can see the blur is only impacting the clip that we added it to. If we wanted to make the blur impact both pieces of footage, you have two options. You can either add the same blur effect with the same parameters to the second piece of footage, and an easy way to go about doing that would be to highlight the effect, copy it, and paste it to the second video layer. But a much easier and simpler solution would be to use what's called an adjustment layer. To add an adjustment layer, simply go to layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Now you have a new layer called an Adjustment Layer. But what does an Adjustment Layer do? Well, in oversimplified terms, an Adjustment Layer is a layer that you can make changes to, and when you make changes to it, it applies those changes to whatever is underneath it. So now let's get rid of the current blur effect by highlighting the effect and hitting either the Delete or Backstroke key. Great, and now let's add the blur to the Adjustment Layer itself. Now we can see that our entire image has been blurred out as a single unit. Nice. One of the best parts of adding effects is how they can all work together towards a common goal. So for example, right now we have a scene that's entirely blurry, which you might think is a little bit silly and has no purpose. But there's actually a couple cases where that would actually be helpful and visually appealing. One of those is when you want to make text stand out even clearer. So let's add in a new piece of text like we learned how to do in video 5. And now that our text is in place, you can see that our attention is drawn completely to the text. But it's still a little bit tough to read our text really easily. So I'm just going to add in a new effect called Hue and Saturation. And then I'm going to drop the lightness down a little bit so that all of our background is darker and the text stands out a little bit more. And if we try to drop our text layer beneath our adjustment layer, we can see that our text is blurred out too. And has the same darkening effect that we just applied. But for now, let's just bring it back above our adjustment layer. 
What's interesting is that even though our text layer isn't technically a video layer, we can still add effects to it. So I'm going to search here for a specific effect called Light Sweep. And I'm going to add it to our text layer on top here. We can see that the effect makes a line across the top of our text. And we can also see some of the parameters that can help us control how it looks. Like, for example, the intensity of the light, as well as the angle that it's shining across our text. And even the position where it's located. And when we change the position, you'll notice that it's only shining a light across the text and not the video, giving it a really cool effect. But you might also notice something else, that when we move the position of the light sweep, it actually looks like light is really sweeping across your text. And you can actually animate it so it appears this way in your scene. Just use the keyframe stopwatch and animate it like we did to the motion of our video in part 3 of this course. Hit the stopwatch to set your starting position. Then move forward and set your ending position. And keep in mind that when you're working with keyframes, it's always best to use the effects panel underneath your layer on your timeline. And this is our final result. Now we have a scene with multiple effects coming together to make something happen. We've just gone over two of the absolutely countless number of effects that you can actually use in this program. So I would suggest going through the list and trying out any that catch your attention. Just playing around inside of After Effects is actually one of the best ways to get comfortable using this program. And guys, that's just been a basic overview of how to use effects in After Effects. I hope you found it helpful. In our next video, we're going to be going over how to use scripts and expressions. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.